Hello, and welcome to the Daytona Airsoft Systems YouTube channel. Today, we are going to be going over the installation of a Daytona WE M4 slash HK416 recoil kit in a WE HK416. This is what you get in the package. You get the Daytona trigger box, the Daytona hop-up unit with the feed tube, you're going to get the trigger mechanism and hop-up rubber, you're going to get the Daytona M4 buffer system, and lastly, you get the bolt carrier group as well as the valve system. The first thing you're going to want to do for the installation is take the gun apart. You're going to want to take out the rear body pin on the receiver so that you can remove the bolt system as well as the charging handle. Afterward, you can remove the front pin and separate the receiver halves. To remove the bolt catch assembly, you need to punch out or push out the retaining pin. After you have removed the retaining pin, make sure that you hold down the bolt catch itself as it is spring loaded and you don't want the spring or catch itself to fly away on you. To remove the pistol grip, you remove the cap at the bottom of the grip. Afterward, you will see a screw that holds the pistol grip onto the receiver. You will remove that screw and then you will need to be careful not to lose the selector detent and the detent spring it retained in the grip. To remove the fire selector, cock the hammer back and then you could pull and spin the selector until it comes out. Next, you will push the rear pin off to the side which will expose a screw that holds the trigger box into the receiver. The next thing that holds the trigger box to the lower receiver is the front hammer pin. Make sure you do not hammer the trigger pin as this is a fake pin and will only damage your gun. So just hammer out the front hammer pin and remove the trigger box. Remove the buffer assembly by pressing down on the retaining mechanism. Afterward, you can use a flathead screwdriver to remove the retaining mechanism but be careful not to lose the spring and plunger inside the mechanism. Once you have the trigger box removed, you're going to remove the trigger box components because you're going to reuse the trigger assembly itself. The first thing you're going to remove is the full auto sear, followed by the hammer assembly, and then lastly you'll remove the trigger itself. We're going to save the trigger pin, and the brass insert for the pin, as well as the trigger itself. However, we will not need the spring or the disconnector. Installing the WE trigger into the Daytona trigger mechanism is fairly self-explanatory. You do not need to add the disconnector spring, you just need to put the two parts together and put the brass sleeve back through it to hold it together. Then when you are installing the trigger back into the Daytona trigger box, you will need to move the two trigger bars out of the way. One is spring-loaded and will pop up by itself. The other one needs to be pushed or pulled out of the way. Next, you will insert the trigger back end first and then you can put the trigger pin back through. Out of the box, the valve system is set up such that the airline will come out of the receiver end plate. However, for our build, we're going to modify it so that it comes out of the grip instead. The reason we do this is because oftentimes end plates are made of steel and are difficult to drill through. So what you're going to have to do is remove the airline and move it to the bottom where there is a set screw that seals the alternate airline hole. When you replace it, add thread locker to both sides and make sure you move the sealing set screw back to the original airline output hole. Optionally, you can remove the valve spring to give yourself a lighter trigger pull. Unscrew the cap remove the spring and screw back on tightly so it doesn't leak. Please note that with the spring removed your gun will cycle once when the airline is connected if the trigger has been pulled beforehand. Now we're going to move on to the lower receiver and we're going to remove the buffer tube. Make sure not to lose the rear pin detent and spring which will be located behind the end plate. In order to install the Daytona air valve system, you're going to need to remove material from the inside of the lower receiver. First, you're going to try to line up the pinhole on the valve system with the rear pinhole of the receiver to see how much it is off by. That will tell you how much material you need to remove from the back of the lower receiver. 
make sure to periodically check the fitment as you are removing material so that you do not remove too much. In terms of fitment, it should not be a loose fit, it should be a good, somewhat tight fit. You will also need to cut a slot into the front of the receiver by the front receiver pin to make sure that there is clearance for the feeding tube in the upper receiver. Onto the upper receiver, you can remove the handguard and you can also remove the gas system. Use an armorer's wrench to remove the barrel nut, then you can pull the outer barrel out as well as the inner barrel and hop-up unit. Then on the upper receiver slash lower receiver rear pin interface, you are going to remove the pin block on the back of the upper receiver in order to make clearance for the air valve system. Once the upper receiver modifications are complete, we are going to drill the airline hole in the lower receiver. We have recently designed a 3D printed drilling jig and it will be included in all future kits. It will help you to drill your pilot hole. The final hole will be drilled to around 10 to 11 millimeters in diameter to fit your airline through. Next, you are going to want to do the same thing to your grip. You can attach the grip to your receiver and use a colored sharpie or pointed edge to mark the grip where you need to drill the hole. You can now take your trigger box and drop it into the lower receiver. Depending on the specific receiver and varying WE tolerances, it may be a simple drop in or it may be a bit tight. If this is a bit tight, do not be afraid to use a rubber mallet to help fit it in. Make sure the receiver rear pin hole and selector hole are lined up nicely. Then you can add the two locking screws where the hammer pin would go on a regular AR-15. You will also need to modify the selector. The full auto slot will need to be widened with an extra shelf. Make sure you do not cut all the way to the bottom. It will need to look something like this, where the shelf is about 2 millimeters wide and about 2.5 to 3 millimeters deep. Insert the selector into the receiver and check to make sure that the full auto lever is allowed to drop out of the way when the selector is moved from auto to semi. Now that the lower is basically done, we can attach the airline to the valve system. Since our airline is coming out of the grip, we are going to use the bottom thread to attach the airline. For end plate airlines, you are going to want to use the thread at the back of the valve. Make sure you use thread locker and a wrench to torque it on appropriately. Insert the valve assembly into the receiver in this orientation. Then you can insert the buffer assembly into the buffer tube. It's a simple drop in. Moving back to the upper receiver, we are going to insert the barrel sleeve into the upper receiver. We are going to measure the location of the hop-up hole in the barrel sleeve so we can drill a co-aligned hole in the receiver. We are going to install the outer barrel and the barrel nut prior to drilling as the hole may need to go through both of those as well. Once you are done, it will look something like this. For our installation, the hole ended up here. Do note though that every receiver is going to be a little bit different, so do not be concerned if your hole ends up being slightly different than ours. Installing the hop-up unit is our next task. You are going to slide the hop-up sleeve all the way up the barrel from the muzzle end up to the hop-up rubber on the chamber end. Then you can attach the steel C-clip. Usually the C-clip is a little bit tight and sometimes it is an easy press fit, but other times it may require the use of a mallet or a vise. Take the barrel with the barrel sleeve and insert that into the hop-up unit. Be careful to line up the hop-up hole and once it's together and lined up, you can use the set screws on the side to secure the hop-up sleeve with the hop-up unit itself. Afterward, you can slide the entire barrel group assembly into the barrel sleeve. Once it is aligned, you can secure it with the outer barrel and the barrel nut. One more thing that we will have to modify is the charging handle. As you can see here, the front lip of the charging handle sits too down and low and hits the front of the bolt assembly. You're going to need to remove material from that lip, and once you're done, you're going to make sure that it can still clear the bolt assembly, but it is still able to pull on the gas key on the bolt carrier. The last thing we're going to need to modify is the bolt release. 
because it no longer uses the we bolt stop function you can remove that entire port at this point we are pretty much done you can take your feed tube and insert it into the hop-up unit insert your charging handle drop in the bolt put the receivers together and you should be able to test fire